Oh yeah, just wanted to pick your brain today. You're you're like basically the business credit card expert. You could get another Amex Blue Business Plus under your social security number and get an additional 12 months of 0% APR. Whatever it is that you have in your mind, whatever ideas that have been fostering for several years, just take action. Hey everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. Really do appreciate you checking in. This is another a Beyond the Grind podcast episode. And this is a special one because this is uh, one of my great friends that I've had the pleasure of knowing for, man, it's been what, like almost 10 years, probably it's 10 plus years. I have no idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. But um, Jaina, really do appreciate you joining the podcast today. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having here, me here, Mike. I've been wanting to chat with you virtually because <laughs> we, we, we talk pretty often i want to say like every day but it's nice to actually make it official into something that's recording so that's nice i'm really excited yeah definitely excited to be here thank you for your time uh yeah and, and you're right you know we we've been talking for quite some time i think uh you know what a lot of entrepreneurs say is that you want to always surround yourself with with positive uh influences i know you're down in socal i'm up here in washington state but um that's the power of tech man you know you can yeah. you could talk to anybody anywhere so very I'm very happy to have you in my my inner circle, so to speak. Mm -hmm, me too. Cool. So yeah, just wanted to pick your brain today. You're you're like basically the business credit card expert. I mean, I've seen I've been following you on your journey like the past few years. Um, you shared with me some you know tactics about, for example, you use uh, your business credit card to to purchase or help with the purchase on one of your real estate investment properties. And, you know, for me personally, I've always been interested in credit cards just in general, because I, I feel that when you have the discipline and yeah. the knowledge combined, like you can really leverage them to the best of your ability. But we'll get into, into that a little bit later. But I just wanted just for everybody that's meeting you for the first time, can you kind of just tell me a little bit about like your story, where you've been and how you've come to basically becoming a credit card expert. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that introduction, Mike. Uh, that is way too kind to call me an expert. I definitely don't consider that myself. Always constantly learning, but definitely above average, I would say. So, I mean, for me, the reason why I got into the credit card world was because I needed capital. I'm currently, I want to say, in a transition. I have a W-2. You know, I went the very prescribed millennial route of going to school, going to grad school, going to uh, getting a job and having a career. But recently I wanted to start a business uh, with my business partner, Paul, and specifically we wanted to do Airbnb arbitrage. And for people who don't know what that is, it's basically you sublease a apartment or a property and put it on Airbnb or other platforms for vacation rentals. And then you charge it as an Airbnb. So you kind of keep the margin in between the rent that you're paying and what you're charging on Airbnb. But in order to even do that, we needed money, right? Because we were like, oh, I don't want to use my own money, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I feel like, man, this is something that a lot of people have been doing. What, what? How are they getting the funds to do it? And that's when we got into credit cards because we just literally needed the capital for our business. So specifically what we did was um, we found a program called Freedom Travel Systems, which is highly, highly recommend that program. It's with mm -hmm. Eli, Allison, and Tommy. They're awesome. And they essentially help business owners get funding, but also understand how to use credit card points for free travel. So from that first coaching program, that really was the catalyst for me to start investing more and more into this skill set. Because for me, I always thought I was a person that could just learn on my own, which I still think I can. But when you compare the time it takes for yourself to learn by yourself, to make those mistakes, and then realize that, hey, maybe you might be you know, having to pay a higher ticket item, but you're fast tracking your way to meet your goals. I realized that that was way better than me trying to figure it out by myself. Mm -hmm. So it was re really me having this pain and this need to get business funding that helped me really just be obsessed with credit cards. That's essentially the background. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, you, you see, you hear a lot of gurus still out there, you know, Dave Ramsey, for example, I, <laughs> I remember messaging you, you him about him the other day. Um, I mean, to be honest, like my wife and I, we follow some of his, his teachings and don't get me wrong. I mean, some of them are, are great as far as like getting out of debt and things like that. But, you know, you have gurus like him that are basically saying credit cards are evil. Credit cards are just not like the way to go as far as building wealth. 
So, I mean, can I kind of get your opinion on that? And also, like, what are some of the kind of like the key benefits of, of using credit cards as far as business goes? Sure. I mean, with all things, there's always pros and cons to different strategies. And mm -hmm. I was watching this YouTube video recently and someone described it so well that credit cards are like fire. And with fire, you can cook your food, you can um, create warmth inside of your house, you can do a lot of good things with fire. But on the other side of the token, fire can burn your food, it could burn down your house. So if you don't know how to use it appropriately, specifically as a tool, then it could either be for destruction or good. So it really depends on the person, maybe not for everyone, right? But it's good to know both sides of the coin, because like you said, everyone always has their different opinions and it's up to you to take everything with a grain of salt and see what fits best to your situation. Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, you know, people that are brand new to the credit card world. So obviously you have your personal cards and then you have your business cards. So can you kind of just touch upon like the main differences between the two? I mean, are they virtually the same or what's kind of like the, the contrast between yeah. the two? This, these are good foundational questions. So personal credit cards, they affect your personal credit. They affect your personal credit report. For the most part, the majority of business cards don't report to your personal credit. There are some that do like Capital One, but for the most part, American Express, Chase, these credit cards that are on the business end won't affect your personal credit. So for example, I think we talked about, uh, I think the Amex Blue Business Plus. So say you got that business credit card and it has a credit limit of $10,000. You could max out that $10,000 on that business credit card and it won't impact negatively your personal credit score because it's kept separately. For people who don't know, if you go over 30% of the utilization, so let's use that example again. If you had 10K credit limit and you're like at 35, or sorry, 3,500 or a higher, or even just 3,000 higher, that's over 30% utilization that will negatively, negatively affect your, your credit score. And people don't realize that there's these different thresholds. They just say like, oh my God, this credit line is 10K, I'm gonna use it all. So not, not really knowing, it's unfortunate because you know, we don't learn this in school. It's something that you kind of encounter in adult life. And a lot of people have personal stories that have really putting them, put them in a bad situation without this knowledge. Yeah, it is absolutely insane how we don't learn any of this in school. And obviously, you know, it's probably for a reason, right? But, um, you know, as far as the, you know, you, you're talking about the different thresholds, like utilization, you know, credit mix and things like that. Mm -hmm. Which section do you feel should one focus on the most? Should it be getting as much of a limit as possible so they have like a huge limit to draw from? Or is it? you know, credit usage, what, what, what's kind of the threshold they should focus on? Uh, so there's different factors that affect your credit score. And the most important one is your on-time payment history. So if you ever missed a payment, gosh, that hurts you so bad. And honestly, you just, sometimes you forget, especially if you're someone who has multiple credit cards, credit cards, I mean. So one of the things that, you know, a lot of people do, especially if they have a lot of credit cards is they put on auto pay. So at the very minimum, you're paying that minimum payment. So if you slip and you forget, then it won't hurt your credit score because at least you're making that payment automatically. However, another thing is important to note is, you know, sometimes people feel like they, whatever happens with their credit score, whatever happens with their credit card companies, they can't do anything about it. They're like, oh, well, I guess that sucks. That happens. But you know what? You can always call. You could always call, talk to an actual human. Usually it's Filipino. So I get along with them. <laughs> and you could be like, hey, you know, I truly just forgot, Even especially if you catch it right away and you call them up and you're like, hey, I totally forgot. Is there any way I could just pay this? And maybe you can just waive that late payment for now. And I promise to do better. Da, 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 da. And I've seen people actually do this and become successful. And, you know, they were able to get it paid and remove that late payment because they called. They took that extra step, not really realizing that you could do that. So absolutely different things that you could do and a lot of nuances when it comes to credit cards that people are just not aware about. Gotcha. Okay. So that makes, that makes total sense. Cause I think, yeah, people, um, can easily just be like, oh, I'll just pay the minimum payments, whatever. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you have a, you know, <laughs> you're, you're yeah. having to pay like interest, you know, the average interest I heard the other day on a credit card, it's like, I think it's up to like 23% now on average. Ridiculous. It's yeah. Dick. yeah. There's a lot of stats right now that I saw that said this year, the Amer Americans mm. had the highest credit card debt this year. So 
Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many things that we could go into. It depends what people are interested in, but it's typically 35% is your on-time payment history. Then you also want to focus on utilization that you're under that 30% credit mix and credit history, you know, I mean, sorry, credit mix, that's just about 10% of your credit score. So don't have to worry about that too much, but it's really primarily um, making sure that you have on-time payments. Got it. Got it. So shifting over kind of like on the business side um, now is um, why would someone want to get a business credit card as opposed to like getting a business loan or just using like their personal or their business checking account to, for purchases and things like that? Yeah, great question. So the reason why a business credit card could be better than a business loan is because there's a lot of 0% APR products in the business credit card realm. When it comes to a loan, you're going to have interest and whatever the terms are, you're going to have to pay a little bit extra than what you originally took out. And the thing that's a big difference that people don't realize is when you're done paying off the loan, that is it. That's the end. You shut the door. You can't do anything else. When you have a business credit card, it's revolving credit. So as long as you're paying it down, you could keep using it over and over and over. That door stays open as a line of credit you could use. So for me, if you know loan terms were like, oh, 7% to access to $10,000 uh, business loan versus 10K in a business credit card with 0% APR for 12 months, of course, I'm going to take the 0% APR business credit card. So mm -hmm. I think really what it is is uh, there's a huge misconception that people think that you need to have an EIN in order to apply for a business credit card, but that's absolutely not the case. Really? So, wow. Yeah, you could literally use your social security number as your EIN when you're doing business credit card applications. So as long as you have the intention of selling a product or a service, that is a business. So you could put your social security number, whether it is that you're babysitting, you walk dogs, you sold one thing on Facebook Marketplace, honestly, that counts as a business. So I think that's a huge block for people not realizing that they're actually eligible for these types of 0% APR uh, credit cards. Wow, and so even if you apply with your um, social security number, it's not gonna report to your personal credit with the business so the credit card? So good question. So the initial application will create a hard inquiry on your personal Got it. score. And that, that could Got range it. anywhere from like one to maybe seven points, but then overall your credit score would go back up. However, once you have your business credit card, anything you do with that after the initial application, that's not gonna report to your personal credit, even though your social security number, your personal one is on the business credit card. So you're telling me I can, let's say I get approved for a hundred grand on a business credit card. I rack it up to 90 grand. That's not going to report at all on the personal nope. credit score at all. Nope. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. And what's even better is like a lot of people do this thing called like credit card stacking. So with you, I know you got the Amex Blue Business Plus. Yeah. And so you've got mm -hmm. that with your EIN. You use the entire 12 months of 0% APR. And you're like, oh man, I wish I had another 12 months of 0% APR you could get another Amex Blue Business Plus under your social security number and get an additional 12 months of 0% APR. So can you imagine like 24 months? I mean, you're not, you're not like rolling it over, but just to have the capital with 0% APR, you could do so much more in your business. It could help you scale tremendously. Man, that is good to know. I had no clue about that. I didn't yeah. know you could just apply with your social security. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you mentioned a couple of credit cards already, like the Capital One and the Amex Business Blue Plus. Are there any of your personal favorites or ones that you recommend someone to get right off, like for their first business credit card? It would be the Amex Blue Business Plus. That one's a bit more of a starter card because American Express is not as strict as Chase. So Chase is like the ultimate bank you want to build relationships with. You want to have their products, but they could be um, pretty strict, especially if you don't have a relationship with them. So if you're really starting with nothing, no relationships with banks, no business credit cards, I would get the American Express Blue Business Plus. But if you do have some kind of relationship with Chase, whether that's a personal checking or savings, I would definitely go for their ink card, specifically the ink business unlimited or the ink business cash those are really good cards because they also have the zero percent uh zero percent interest rate for 12 months and they have no annual fee and they have really big sign up bonuses as well so you could got, get up to like 750 the sign up bonus is 750 dollars cash back or 70,000 chase points for the sign up bonuses for those two cards oh wow and then also, I'm pretty sure 
you would recommend Chase Two's because not everybody accepts American Express, right? Exactly. So exactly. Like, okay. You know, yeah, especially because you mentioned some of my renovation projects for real estate. The only reason why I was able to use my American Express cards, even though my contractors and vendors didn't accept it, was because my general contractor allowed me to just pay him a lump sum with my American Express card through PayPal, and then he paid his contractors through that money. So typically, it really depends on your industry. If you're paying contractors and stuff, you definitely want to go with Visa more than American yeah. Express. Mm -hmm. That's gotcha. a good question. Okay. Great. And so like, in addition to that, I mean, let's be honest, credit cards comes with its, with its perks, right? Like yeah. some of the cool perks that are out there. So what are some uh, perks that you enjoy that you've used that, you know, people may not know about? Travel, 100% travel for sure. And I've always enjoyed travel. I started traveling uh, just in, in 2010. And I remember that's when I, around that time, I started using points specifically with Chase. And I didn't know better. So when I would book, I would book through the Chase portal, which 99% of the times you don't want to book through the travel portal, but I would get like a free night for like 100,000 points. And I was like, yeah, I got a free night, but that's an awful redemption. That's like way too many points for just one night. But I thought yeah. I was like, awesome. I was like, yeah. <laughs> but um, aside from that, like it really depends because I've had people reach out to me and they're like, Jana, I don't travel. I really don't care. And I was like, okay, get cash back. Mm -hmm. Right. And another, but then the thing I also want to let them know is like, you don't travel, but you, ha you have employees that you like to reward. So instead of you paying from your own business card, taking from your bottom line as a business deduction, if you don't want to, instead, you could use those travel points to reward your top performing employees for doing so well. So those are different things that you could do, especially in a business. Otherwise, I understand if you truly just want cash, that's your prerogative. And then, you know, use it to improve the bottom line of your company. Absolutely. But if you're really trying to extract the most value from your points, you could absolutely do luxury travel with just your normal business expenses. Oh, got it. Wow. I never really saw it that way. That's crazy. That's great, man. So the possibilities are endless. That's crazy. So like in addition to travel, aren't there like, like for example, like I think the Amex Business Platinum, you have like the Bose credit or like the- um, Oh, sure, can, sure. Can you go, go into those yeah, perks too? Absolutely. So I have many business cards. As you're mentioning, the Amex Business Platinum card is, is very high tier. I just want to let people know that they have different perks. It's not the same. The personal and the business cards are a little bit different. They're mostly the same, but they differ in their perks. So for the business platinum, you get a $400 Dell credit every single year. So if you compare that to the annual fee, which is 695, you're like, dang, that's a lot. But if you're using that $400 Dell credit, which a lot of people can use that, it's a very functional credit, whether you need new, I don't know, things for your laptop, new headset, new mic, probably I need a better camera. That's something that you could use to really offset that annual fee. And then that also comes with like $200 um, hotel credit. It comes with a clear credit, which is $189, where you get to like fast track through the security lines at certain airports. It also comes with TSA PreCheck or Global Entry. I'd suggest Global Entry because it also comes with TSA PreCheck. And the business card also comes with like it comes with an Indeed credit. It also comes with an Adobe subscription credit. So it's very business focused. Um, but for the most part, you really want to make sure that if you're going to get such a high annual fee business credit card that you functionally have use for those perks. Because some people, okay, they don't really need it, right? Depending on their business, maybe they really don't need those perks. Maybe they really don't travel. So it's not necessary to get that platinum card because what people don't understand is the platinum card is good for perks, but it's not good for earning points. For most regular mm -hmm. spend, you only get one point per dollar. So that's why personally my favorite is the business gold because I get four points on gas. You know, I get four points on ads. You know, it's really good for just normal spend, but you're not going to get like those high, high level um, travel benefits from the platinum. So it really depends. Like for me, whenever I see someone at a restaurant, paying with a platinum card i'm like you don't know what's up you're like wasting <laughs> you're not using the right card you're just you're just using it because it's a platinum card but if you actually paid with the gold i'm like okay you know what's up because you know the gold card's the best to pay with at a restaurant so there's a lot of mm. 
a lot of information to have to learn in regards to knowing which card is optimized for your business. What exactly are your goals and the, can these cards meet those goals? I just, I just love it all. Honestly, it's like a game to me. Oh, I bet. You're like earning all these yeah. points. It really is like a game because you get rewarded. Yeah, so so my question is, why won't these credit card companies just come out with like one card? Why do they have like the gold, the platinum, you know, the rose gold and all that? I mean, yeah. why, why do you think it like, I mean, what's what's up with that? It's capitalism. Now, <laughs> it's because a not there's not one card for every person, right? There's like you could say the same thing, like why not just have one iPhone forever and not have multiple iPhones or different kinds of versions. It's the same thing, like different products. Um, are geared towards different people. And it depends really on your gold and what you spend the most money on that defines what credit card is best for you. Got it. Okay. So with that being said, perks out of the way, everybody, you heard it, the perks. If yeah. you like any of these perks that Jaina just said, make sure you uh, look into them, um, but make sure to do your, your research before. Um, so with that being said, kind of going towards like self-control, right? Like, yeah. you know, I look at you, I look at you and I know for sure you have to have some type of self-control to have all those credit cards, which is which is major kudos to you. So do you have any like tips for people who may struggle with, you know, you ha like psychologically, you know, you have the credit card there and you have the balance. It's easy to spend, right? Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of it. A bunch of people are guilty of it. So do you have any like tips as to like how you can maintain that discipline so you don't like have the credit cards control you, so to speak? Sure, absolutely. So what I like to think of is treat a credit card like it's a debit card. That's really how you just should have a mindset in, in regards to when it comes to spending. So if you don't have the money in your bank account to actually pay for it, don't do it. Hmm. And that's a little bit easier said than done. For me, I actually had an interview with, with someone yesterday and they're asking me like, why is it that your credit is so good and you didn't have that urge to spend more, right? And I realized as I was do doing some reflection, it was because I grew up in a working class family where what's not mine is not mine. So because I believe that when I had a credit card, even though the credit limit was like 5K, maybe when I was starting on college, if I only had $200 in my bank account, I would never touch that $4,900 dollars because to me it just wasn't mine there was like a disassociation between what was available to me and what i could actually have access to but i wouldn't say that's like very applicable it just happens to be my unique upbringing that made me like it was you know fortunate it was fortunate because it didn't make me want to spend but really if you just have the mindset of you know this credit card treat it like a debit card then you know whether or not you can use it but if you find yourself psychologically not able to do that then just don't do it just don't <laughs> it's, it's just gonna be it's gonna be the bad fire for you right it's the bad fire not the good fire yeah got it got it so yeah that, i mean i think i just read a study the other day like credit card debt is like at an all-time high i think it was like 38 trillion or something like that it was some some ridiculous number it's it's wild how many people are in debt yeah. and um yeah i think self-control and discipline are everything um so with that said i know we were talking a little bit offline about some of the common mistakes that people um commit when using a business credit card can you kind of shed some light on some of those absolutely so one of them is thinking that the banks are perfect. And we kind of alluded to this earlier. And what I mean by this is if you get a response from a bank, you think that's it. That's the end of the game. They rejected me. There's nothing else I could do. But banks have a reconsideration line, which is a dedicated phone line for people who submit their applications that want to, you know, reconsider their application. So if for some reason you're rejected from a business card, always, always call the reconsideration line of the banks. Because when you're doing your application electronically, it's a computer, it's all algorithm. So you don't actually have a human seeing all your information and saying, oh, this person is a trustful lender, right? Or a trustful borrower. So we have this term called hang up and call again. So basically, first of all, if you get rejected, always call the reconsideration line and ask why. A lot of the times people will be surprised because they realize, oh, they just needed this extra piece of information, which I told the person on the phone. They're like, okay, good, you're approved, right? It could be so simple. But another thing that I've learned in like all of these coaching programs that I got is to, if you don't get the answer you want the first time, and I remember I asked you to do this, hang up mm -hmm. and call again, because sometimes it just depends on the representative. They might be having a bad day, 
they might be really tired. Maybe they got off a call and someone who was really annoying and they just are rolling over that energy onto you. So if you get a denial, hang up, literally call back and you'll get a new representative and you'll be amazed how the how the decision can change depending on the person that you're speaking with. So that would be one of the misconceptions, like thinking that the banks don't make any mistakes, right? So just always be an advocate for yourself because at the end of the day, you know, you know, you do good things with this money, you be able to use it in a way and pay it back. So that's really up to you to do your due diligence. Um, another thing that I feel like is a big mistake is people don't know how to apply correctly for business credit card applications. And that's reasonable, obviously, especially if someone's just starting up a business, they have no idea. There's all these words are not really sure what they could put on there. So there's specific places on the business application where people often make mistakes. And one of them is the income. A lot of the times people think that it's just their income but if you read the fine, fine print a lot of the times you could put your household income you could even add dividends stocks your rental income because the higher income that you're able to put on the application the more likely you're higher you're able to get a higher credit limit for that card so it's a lot of these little nuances and for example another thing on the business application there are certain industries in businesses that banks see as high risk right so as you can imagine all these banks closing down they're not as you know open-handed to give you generous credit limits so you always want to make sure you do everything that you can to show that you're the best candidate as possible and one of the ways that you could do that is not putting a high-risk industry so what's a high-risk industry as defined by the banks real estate real estate it's a high-risk industry really yeah wow. so because they they consider the high-risk industry another one is trucking for some reason, that's big risk. For some reason, anything in finance. So you want to be sure that you put as generic of an industry as possible in your application so you don't put up these red flags to people. And even for me, even though I am in real estate, when I'm applying for these you know, business credit cards, it's, if it's under my social security number, I will never put real estate. I'll put like consulting, management, something just super generic so I don't seem risky to the banks. Wow. Okay. And so... Let's say someone's a real estate agent and they want to get a business. Like, what would you suggest they, they do? Put uh, put a general. Do not put real estate. Just don't do it. Just put something. Just don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Okay. Yeah, just put something more, more generic. More generic. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. There's an option. Um, say there's no management nor consulting. Just put other. And then when it comes to it, if there's an issue, then the bank will call to try to clarify. Then you could say like, oh, I do management, consulting, stuff like that. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you want that that big limit, everybody, you gotta <laughs> gotta put other put yeah. other on there on that option. Yeah, got it. Cool. Um, was that it? Was that was there other uh, common mistakes? Those are the two um, ones. Let me think. Um, hold on. Let me think. I think I had one written. No, you're good. I, I, I'll cut it out. Edit this, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another one was. Oh, this one's kind of interesting. So I wanted to talk about how, I, um, so did we just start right now or did we just go? Yeah, you, you can just go ahead, yeah. So this is not necessarily a mistake, but it's more of a hack, I guess I would say. Say for example, you have this 0% APR credit card for 12 months and you're like, oh man, I still have a little bit of a balance that I need to pay off, but it's so small. What people don't realize that they could do is you could call and ask if they could extend that APR period for a few months, just ask them. Again, this kind of just goes back to just talking to a human and seeing what's possible. And you'd be surprised to be like, okay, we'll give you another 60 days. And you're like, wow, that's exactly what I needed. My numbers work and I could pay it off in that period of time. Wow. So I would essentially say that's a mistake, not asking for an extension if you need it. Wow. Interesting, man. Usually, yeah, some of those APR, like even some of the credit cards are like 18 months. So that'd be, yeah. that's like, dude, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as far as um, the business credit cards are concerned, are there any cards on the horizon that you're kind of like keeping your eyes on that you don't have yet that you're like planning to apply for or yes. do you have all of them already? I'm, I'm actually in the middle of applying to the city. Oh. It's a city business cards like um, I can't even remember the name city. American Airlines Advantage business card. Oh, okay. oh my yeah, gosh, it's been so annoying, Mike, because they keep asking me for my tax form. I sent Ooh. it to them, right? And then they never said anything. I followed up. They're like, oh, we didn't receive your tax form. I'm like, I'm looking at my email right now. And they're like, oh, it needs to be a PDF and not an image. I'm like, okay. 
I send it back and they're like, oh, you had a scratch off in the check mark, so you have to do it again. It's been like one and a half months and I've just been trying to get this city credit card because I have a lot of American Express. I have most of the Chase cards. So I'm just trying to diversify because with city, I mean, sorry, with that particular card, you get American Airlines points mm -hmm. and I could use that to get Japan airline points because I want to go to Japan mm -hmm. early next year, specifically try their first class product but I would need American airline points because Amex or Chase doesn't transfer to um, Japan Airlines. So that's like literally my move with that. But it just it just goes to show that we talked about this, you know, how banking relationships are everything. You could have a really high credit score. You could have a nice credit profile. But if you don't have that relationship with the bank, then they're not going to be willing to lend to you. Right. You always want the people say that, you know, you need to make sure that you're kind of like dating the bank. You're not just going to get married right away with this credit card. You want to have a you know, checking account with them, you want to have a savings account with them. That way they could see that, you know, you're building a relationship with them and you don't just want to take their money and their products. Wow. That's man, that's crazy. Dude, I, that's just also crazy how good you are knowing like which points convert where oh, yeah. like, <laughs> of course, like American Airlines to Japan. Yeah, I mean, yeah. dude, I would have, I would have no clue. I thought everything was just kind of the same. So like, are there any like resources you use that helps you know what converts to what as far as like travel goes or yeah so i mean you could really just google it if you have the american express cards and their membership rewards points if you just google like transfer partners there's all these okay. lists that will come up um you know yeah. sometimes like when when you've been transferring your points for a while like for example a transfer partner that's really popular with chase is hyatt like everyone knows to use their chase points for hyatt because you have such good redemptions and such good value from the points that you're getting um mm -hmm. So once you start transferring it, you, you get an idea of what are better redemptions and what are some sweet spots for the locations that you want to visit. So you were talking about, um, you know, perks. So I wanted to mention like last month I was able to take like a luxury vacation to Lake Como just oh, using right. the for my renovation. Wow. Yeah. So this is, let me, let me kind of explain what happened here. So for my third Excuse rental me. property, I was able to get a subject to loan, but it's not a subject to in that I took over someone's mortgage. I don't know why my realtor called it that, but he just called it a subject to loan. But basically they wrapped the renovation costs into the loan and they gave me a lump sum, which was about, I don't know, like 28K for the renovation. So I basically had 28K deposited into my bank account, which I would just give to the contractors to do the renovation. But I was like, Wait, 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 wait. Let me let me do something. Ooh. Let me do something yeah. with this. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna open a bunch of cards and get sign up bonuses because the most you ever have to spend on a sign up bonus is probably 15k for the platinum. But I had like, you know, 28k to work with. I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to do this. Oh, another wow. hack. I forgot to tell you another hack is yeah, once you have one personal American Express card. Any card, whether it's personal or business after that, will only be a soft pull on your credit. So it's not going to hurt your credit score. That's why you could go ham with American Express. And a lot of people stack American Express cards for business funding because it's not going to affect their personal credit. We talked about how, you know, it's only when the application, they do a hard pull and that affects your personal credit. Amex, nah. You just go with it. Just go so with it. So if I wanted to get the gold card today and I applied for it, they would only do a soft pull so, on my no, personal? You have to have a personal Amex card because you have to- Oh, have personal, got plus. It. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. it could depend, but I would just make sure you have a personal Amex card. And then once you have the personal one, anything after, it's all soft pull. Interesting. Right? Okay, okay, so I took okay. this 28K, right? I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. So I opened the American Express um, gold card, the business gold card, and that gave me 110000 Amex points. I opened the Chase Inc. Um, unlimited card and that gave me 90,000 Chase points, right? And then I used my American Express Blue Business Plus that earns two points per dollar on the rest of the renovation. So I think I racked up 230,000 points just from that renovation, just because I had this unique loan. And I'm sure I'm not the only person. I'm sure other people in real estate or other businesses realize like, wow, you could use credit cards as a pass through to get essentially free travel. And for me personally, I think free travel is truly a fringe benefit of businesses in real estate because you're accruing so many expenses that you just get these points and miles naturally. And it's, it's, it's a unique position because People in the points and miles industry, they actually join buying groups because they're trying to use their credit cards more and spend more money so they could earn the points. 
as -hmm. opposed to business owners and real estate investors, we're already spending that money. So you might as well get the free travel. So with all those points, right, that 230K, what I was able to get is I was able to get three nights at Grand Victoria Hotel in Lake Como. And for those three nights, it was like about $2,500 value. Um, it also came with like free breakfast, free access to the spa, which is the biggest spa in Lake Como. I also got a round trip tip ticket on Emirates business class. So for the round trip ticket, it was about $6,000. Um, value from that. So as you can see, you know, I literally, because I had this knowledge of knowing how to use money as a pass through through credit cards and knowing which credit cards could be used at what time you're able to get like free travel as a benefit for like just doing your normal business activities. Damn. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's do the math here. So let's say, oh, okay. okay. On, on your trip, you did to Europe. So how much out of pocket did you spend compared to how much did the credit card points okay. pay for the vacation? So in total, I did have to use some like, so that was 230,000 points that I gained from the renovation, but I still had to add some of my own. Um, but in total, that was like a seven week vacation and it was two round trip business class flights on Emirates, three nights at Victoria, that Grand Victoria Hotel, three nights at the Westin Palace Milan. Um, yeah, all that value was over $19,000. Yeah, $19,000 that I got just from using like this business card strategy. And this is a thing, Mike, you could do this. You could do this. Real estate investors could do it. So many people could do it as long as they take a little bit of time to kind of learn how to leverage their business expenses for this free travel. Man, that is incredible. Okay, I'm going to, um, I need to prepare my vacation to Japan. So <laughs> yeah. I'll have to start doing that strategy. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So if let's say someone's totally brand new, has no clue about credit cards, you would say that the first card they should get is the Amex Blue, Business Blue Plus, right? So if you're telling me someone has no clue about credit cards, the real first step mm. is understanding how to use credit, understanding your own personal credit profile. Because like I said, you could easily turn it into bad fire as opposed to good fire if you don't know your personal credit profile. So what a lot of people think of is your credit score is like your report card, but your credit profile is like your transcript. So say, for example, you're trying to get a card with Chase. It's like the Ivy League. Right. It's like the Ivy League and you have a good credit score. You have a good GPA, right? You have a good GPA, um, but then you get denied. And then you're wondering, why did I get denied? I have such a high GPA because in your transcript, in your credit report, you have a late payment. That's like having an F on like a required class to even get into the college. So what people need to really understand is how to understand their credit report, how to understand their credit card and what exactly they're doing, how it affects um, their capabilities to apply for these credit cards. So yeah, if if I, I obviously have to give like a, a caution there because it's so easy to get excited about credit cards and free travel, mm -hmm. right? But if you don't have that foundation of understanding of credit, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna be good for you. Okay, and so, are there any resources that you use to monitor your credit card? Do you use like Credit Karma or something like that? Or um, so use? I use the Experian app because that okay. gives me my FICO score for Experian. I also use my FICO, which gives me my free Equifax score. Um, but typically there's a lot of different resources, which I can provide to you later that you could get like a free yeah. credit report one time per year for like a dollar. Wow. Yeah. That's but great. Just starting that's off awesome. with those apps. They're good because they're free. They could give you your up to date score all the time. Dude, this has been amazing knowledge that you shared with us. Um, obviously, we'll probably have you on uh, so other episodes because there's so many, oh, so know. many, yeah, so many topics to cover as far as you know credit cards go. We haven't even touched the real estate stuff yet, yeah. so we'll be sure to have you on again. Um, so, how can people follow you? Uh, keep in touch. I mean, I don't know if you have any. Uh, resources that you can share with others, but you know, how can people follow you? Sure. The main way people could follow me is just on my Instagram, which is Jaina underscore Ann. So J A I N E J A I N A underscore A N N E. And that's where I usually typically talk about, you know, business credit cards, travel hacking, real estate, kind of all of the things that I'm really interested in. That would be the best way to follow me. Cool. And um, is there any other resources that you're releasing out uh, anytime soon? Yeah, good question. Kind of I'm in, 
Yeah, I'm in the process of creating a newsletter, specifically a course. So what I realize is there's a lot of people, you know, in the travel hacking space, there's just a lot of great resources. And then there's a lot of people who are realtors or in the real estate investing space. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to bridge the gap and show real estate investors how they could get free travel through travel hacking and business credit cards. So if anyone's interested in that, just DM me the word newsletter at my Instagram and then I'll add them to the newsletter because I'll eventually come up with that course and see what people are interested in most. Awesome. Cool. And yeah, guys, I'll be leaving all the links down in the description. Make sure you check those out. Um, but other than that, Jaina, thank you so much for uh, joining the podcast today. Thank you. Really do appreciate it. And do you have any closing words for anybody that's watching right now? Sure. I would just say, you know, Whatever it is that you have in your mind, whatever ideas that have been fostering for several years, just take action. Just take action now. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to know all the information before you get started. In fact, it's better to just jump in and learn that way. Because I used to be that person. I used to be that person where I was like, I need to know everything. I need to, everything needs to be planned. I need to understand what's going on or it's too risky. But when I finally jumped in because of my, basically my business partner was like, let's just do it. And I was like, okay, of course it's scary. But now I got to a point where I feel like, wow, I finally have momentum. I'm finally, you know, understanding how to do businesses. I'm finally figuring out what I really want to do in life. So it would really just to be take action, take action now. Mm -hmm. And specifically, I'm going to butcher this quote. I saw a quote that really resonated with me, but it was something along the lines of, you know, there's someone out there that is less experienced than you, that has less education than you but is making way more money than you because they decided to take action today. And I was like, oh, that one stings. Right? Yeah, <laughs> so that when, stings I heard, me too. Yeah, when I heard that, I was like, I need to do this because it's true. It's true. We get stuck in this like analysis paralysis and really we just need to jump in. Yeah, that's why I'm, I want you to start making YouTube videos. Uh, that's what been, been talking about. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. So everybody, when you when you, no. when you DM her the word newsletter, make sure you DM her the word YouTube no. so she can start making YouTube videos. All right, we'll cool. See. I need a better camera, so, so I'll use my Dell credit, right? I got you. Yeah, there okay. we go. Cool. There we go. Well, hey, Jaina, uh, really appreciate you uh, taking the time and just wanted to say, you know, you're doing some awesome work. I mean, the, I see all the, the value you share like on Instagram and I'm just super impressed by it and also just very happy that you know we've remained friends this long so looking forward to your growth and wishing you all the best thank you so much mike and thank you so much for having me here i really appreciate it cool all right guys take care we'll see you in the next video